over the course of the last 10 years, 15 years, um, almost everybody who sits on a stage like this would tell you it is vital that your children learn computer science. Um, everybody should learn how to program. And in fact, it's almost exactly the opposite. It is our job to create computing technology such that nobody has to program. And that the programming language, it's human. Will AI replace software engineers? The global search volume for this question peaked in March 2024. People seemed concerned, and content creators added fuel to the fire. So, in May 2024, Stack Overflow asked 65,000 developers if they see AI as a threat to their jobs. Seven out of 10 answered no. Well, the sentiment seems to be pretty positive, but why did the question stir the pot that much? What about AI coding tools makes people doubt their choice of profession? Let's discuss what AI can and cannot do in the programming industry and see how to get the most out of this next wave of tech revolution. First things first, let's agree on what we mean by AI coding. AI coding is about using tools like GitHub Copilot, Amazon's Code Whisperer, or Visual Studio IntelliCode to assist developers with mundane tasks. These virtual helpers are based on large language models trained on massive volumes of data that can understand and generate code. So how exactly does it work? The most popular way Gen AI helps with programming is, well, by writing the code itself. The machine tries to analyze the context of what you're working on and give recommendations based on patterns found in millions of code samples. Then goes the good old search for answers. You can articulate your request or prompt in natural language and get help from AI. Some studies have shown that while Google is better for general questions, ChatGPT totally crushed it in coding queries. You can also use AI for other tasks like documenting code or bug searches. The opportunities are countless. That's why in 2024, around 62% of programmers used Gen AI tools as a sidekick for their coding needs. And such widespread adoption is easily explained. The key word here is productivity. In 2023, a simple experiment was done. There were two groups of programmers. One got access to GitHub Copilot, and the other could use any online resource like Stack Overflow. The task was to build an HTTP server in JavaScript as quickly as possible. The results were striking. The group using GitHub Copilot finished 55% faster, showing that AI can indeed speed things up. Other studies presented similar findings, and sure enough, developers themselves see the difference. Over 80% of programmers say that productivity growth is the main benefit provided by AI assistance. In October 2024, another shocking piece of news emerged. Google's CEO disclosed that over 25% of the tech giant's new code is now written by AI. What does it mean? It shows that leading corporations are now embracing this new technology, acknowledging its value and contributing to mass adoption. So isn't that evidence of a large-scale transition to AI coding? Machines do stuff faster, don't sleep, don't complain, and don't ask for raises, sick leaves, or extra vacation days. So maybe, after all, it's the right time to panic? Well, not just yet. Even though AI does generate those code snippets in a flash, there's a lot more to the story. So to figure out what exactly is wrong with AI coding assistance, we asked Sergey Shelpuk, an AI tech consultant, to share his perspective. The uh, situation is, especially in the software engineering, is that we just know when we start building, when we start developing, we just know something that is quite hard to explain in text. It's quite hard to dump into the LLM or dump into all those assistant and copilot systems everything we know about this customer, this account, the market, the needs, the requirements. Lots of those are unspoken. 
to supply all this understanding, all this information into the system. And obviously, if you think about how would you do that, it'll take you maybe longer to explain that all to the system than actually sit down and implement what you really understand needs to be done. The point is that, unlike humans, AI still can't understand the full context of a project. It can't foresee the long-term business perspective. It can't figure out how to align the market needs, stakeholder expectations, financial considerations, and technical decisions. That's what people do. Software engineering is about translating a business problem into a technical solution. And AI can only do precisely what it's instructed to do, like generating a specific function or finding a bug but it still can't solve a problem as a whole. What matters is that engineers and the team should understand uh, very well what they are doing, what's the objective, and how they will move from, from stage A to stage B. It might be a useful tool on the system design side, but the more we go from the sheer coding to the decision-making on how the system should work, the less, the less reliable and less applicable Gen AI tools uh, generally become. Another problem AI is notorious for is hallucinating. AI generates content at a phenomenal speed, but there's no guarantee it's accurate. Back in 2022, Stack Overflow was flooded with lousy code, so the platform had to ban AI-generated content altogether. A recent study showed an over 40% increase in bug rate when developers used Copilot. Obviously, verifying such code adds an extra step to the process, and instead of writing new features, you can find yourself spending hours trying to find someone else's mistake, no matter how smart that someone is. For inexperienced coders, this can be a dangerous pitfall. Junior developers often lack the knowledge to proof-check the AI-generated content and risk committing a faulty piece. Over-reliance on AI and not verifying generated code can lead to more serious problems than just an inactive button. One of them is security. Some recent studies show that up to half of code suggestions present potential security vulnerabilities. Those could be authentication mistakes, SQL injections, increased buffer overflows, and so on. As if including secure in the prompt is too hard, huh? So why does that happen? For example, AI tools can be trained on outdated or erroneous data. And you know the drill, it's always garbage in, garbage out. Or AI might not be up to date with the latest security threats or industry regulations, such as in healthcare. Whatever the reason, using AI as a hack can potentially open the door to breaches, data leaks, or exposed APIs. Another concern that's often mentioned is the growing technical debt. Well, yeah, some argue that all code we produce is technical debt. Others assert that AI prevents technical debt as it can produce more optimal code. Well, at least sometimes. But in many cases, it's just too tempting to plug the holes with AI suggested quick fixes, which can eventually result in a code base becoming a tangled mess of jerry-built solutions that are difficult to refactor or upgrade. The list of AI limitations goes on and it shows that AI will probably not replace programming experts anytime soon, just as the no-code approach couldn't some decade ago, or the development of IDEs in the 90s, or pretty much any other automation advancement that scared uninformed minds during the course of history. That said, by all means, we're not calling on anyone to avoid AI tools, certainly not. It can still be put to good use, if used right. So besides code generation, where else can AI be applied? From my experience, from my perspective, it seems like the AI could be most applicable not for writing the code per se, but say for the configuration and for the debugging. AI, generative AI is wonderful when you need to build the complex deployment CI CD configuration. It is wonderful when you are building complex workflows, for example, for the specific cloud environment, and you uh, get you, you get you get you get quickly lost in all those YAMLs and JSONs. With Gen AI, it gets way, way easier for you. So one possible use case for AI assistance is configuring your system. In addition, AI can suggest ways to improve performance, such as running tests in parallel or better managing resources, so that you can make your CI-CD pipeline faster and more efficient. 
code review and debugging is another area where you can apply AI. Given that sometimes programmers spend up to 75% of their time on debugging, having an extra pair, myriad pairs, of robo eyes can be very helpful. Same is true about the code review. You can, the Gen AI stuff, the Gen AI products could look at all those diffs, differences between the code base and also the commits and help you, first of all, help you figure out what requires your attention. Because when you are do when you do code review, it takes time to figure out what's going on, right? You have lots of those diffs and you you look at each of them, you need to understand whether that, that is worth uh, digging deeper or whether that's just a boilerplate or in, in other way, um, the shallow code that could be just passed. Gen AI is great in that sense as well. It helps you figure out whether you need to spend time on this particular change, on this particular commit, or whether you know, whether you've seen that before, whether you approved that before, and whether you can just approve it once again. One more use case can be log monitoring. You can't keep an eye on those logs all the time, right? Otherwise, that would be all you do all day. And that's why you only know something's wrong when it already happened. Same goes for the, uh, for the support and for the monitoring. Again, monitoring produces lots of logs. All these logs are normally dumped into the logging on the cloud. And uh, well, we only go there when there is an issue. We only look at those logs when there is an error, right? We don't really explore warnings. And in that sense, Gen AI gives you um, kind of an eye that looks at those logs constantly, permanently, looking not just at the severe cases that shutters the application, but on those tiny, tiny details that uh, kind of uh, indicate that things might not be uh, as good as you expect them to. And that allows us for the early prevention, early detection of those potential issues. Well, while AI can't build the entire software system on its own, it can indeed free developers from some of the repetitive, mundane tasks. Who wouldn't want that? Also, with AI, building MVPs and prototypes becomes faster. AI makes it easy to test ideas with minimal upfront investment in time and resources. You can quickly get a product in front of users, gather feedback, and iterate. We all go through this MVP stage where we just need this product to work. It's not about the code being beautiful, um, at the MVP stage, even the most experienced engineers, sometimes the most experienced engineers do that the most. A copy and paste stuff from all sources and building the software, building the product out of ready to use um, semi, semi cooked blocks, such that we ship as soon as we can, we can build the product and give the product into the hands of the real users as soon as we can and get the feedback and then we iterate. Because um, with the product development, again, the code quality is not the primary issue. The primary issue often is that we're building something that nobody wants to use. In summary, a good way of treating AI assistance is like that of a handy tool. You can't build a house with a single hammer and no construction skills, but you can definitely use it for certain processes. Same with AI coding platforms. They're great for getting quick suggestions, but the human touch is still needed to ensure that code is correct, functional, and secure. And just like any other handy tool, AI assistants are getting more and more popular. So to wrap up, let's take a glimpse into the future and see what it holds for AI coding. Coding assistants have been developing at breakneck speed. Look at what IDEs could do just a few years ago. It was pretty much about auto-completing code and catching basic errors. Now, AI-powered tools have already become so much more sophisticated. They can write entire functions, debug software, craft documentation, explain code snippets, and even configure complex workflows. Before we knew it, they've evolved into a hybrid collaborative environment where AI and human coders co-create software. So as these tools mature, we can expect them to become more context-aware. Also, there will probably be a growing focus on ethical coding practices and addressing security concerns. It will be especially important for applications in such sensitive industries as healthcare and finance. For developers, one of the likely outcomes is the shift in their tasks. They will probably spend less time writing the code itself and focus more on high-level tasks of thinking out the entire system. Still, no time to relax. The complexity tends to increase 
about the, the complexity of the world around us, the complexity of the products that we are building, the complexity of the ecosystem. So the complexity tends to increase and the challenges tend to increase. Um, Probably we, will, we need more time to think about those abstract things. And if there's a system, if there's an application, if there's a technology that could spare some of our time from writing the basic code and dedicate the time towards the system design, towards the architecture, that would be definitely helpful. On the dark side, one of the potential consequences of over-reliance on AI assistance can be skill atrophy. Calculators made us worse at mental mathematics. Using GPS navigators, we stop remembering routes. With smartphones, we feel we don't need to memorize telephone numbers anymore. It's the same with any technology. Instead of honing your own expertise, you're outsourcing your growth to a machine. And while it's tempting to let the AI handle the heavy lifting, this can lead to skill stagnation. Ultimately, if you over-rely on AI, you might not even be able to perform without its help or be able to solve unique, complex problems that AI cannot yet address. But what if the future of software development isn't about coding at all? AI app builders, though still in their infancy, can potentially change how we create software. Today, no-code AI tools like Pico, Softer, and QuickBase can help build simple solutions. All you have to do is describe the app's functionality in plain language and watch it come to life. Literally, zero coding needed. These tools have an intuitive drag and drop interface and provide templates you can customize with prompts. They also allow users to add backend functionality like connecting to third-party APIs. However, these platforms still can't handle complex app ideas or extensive customization but chances are that with time, they could become a lot more powerful. As AI continues to evolve, it might enable all-in-one platforms that make app development accessible to everyone, no matter their skill level. Most probably, no code won't replace coding entirely, at least soon, but it's easy to see it becoming a major part of how we build software in the future. Well, one way or the other, there's a long road ahead for AI coding. And as this technology develops, programmers and businesses alike must adapt to the new reality, making sure they make the most of it. And it seems like that the demand for the engineers is only restricted by the creativity and ideas of those companies that build the tech businesses. And it seems like that this particular resource, the creativity and the ideas of those who make decisions, they are inexhaustible. Share your experience with AI assistance in the comments below. And stay tuned for more tech updates from Alltechsoft. Soft.